Well, thanks so much for joining us, Chris. Great to be back, Kendall. Of course, great to be back here in Las Vegas. Now, we are going to tell, talk about Oracle's intelligent role-based agents. But before we do, let's take it a, let's roll it back. Take it a few steps back. What are AI agents? Okay, let me just start from kind of, kind of baseline. They're really about the next level of process automation for organizations. And instead of kind of these rule-based process frameworks of the past, we're leveraging generative AI, large language models to do the processing for us. Got it. Okay. And so what role do these agents, you know, what, what do they help people solve? I mean, it sounds like it's similar to automation, but... Yeah, really the, really the diff, couple differences. The, really the difference is these agents can take on roles within the organization, right? And they can have goals, they can have objectives, um, they can achieve business outcomes. And probably the, the highest value, one of the highest values that they can do is they can learn over time, they can adapt, right? So they can get smarter as things change because they have memory. So, so they, right. they learn and they adapt and you don't have to going back in and change. So with like robotic process automation or just automation in general, you pre-program the rules, the system follows the rules, but here you've got AI going, oh, we're noticing a pattern, we're noticing a change, or an agent's able to talk to another agent, something like that. It, exactly. So, so the kind of ro robotic process automation that passed was really all of these different code branches of how the path needed to happen and you know, if you missed a path or something changed, you had to go back in and, and, and make change to the code. With, with large language models, um, they can learn over time. So you can have them as a role of customer service agent, as, as an example, working on cases for customers. And they can look for patterns in the data. They can identify which knowledge documents make the most sense. And those can change over time. So they'll say, hey, look, this was the latest and greatest knowledge document that we can send to, to solve this particular problem today. Tomorrow, it'll be a different one that they send. So you don't have to continue to go in and update them on how they should behave. They can, they can learn and adjust over time. Got it. Got it. Very exciting. Smarter automation, I feel like. That's what we're going for. Absolutely. I mean, it, it really is a, a way to build a system where it can work alongside people. Right. right? So, so you can have a role, um, somebody that is taking a kind of a benefits analyst or benefits, you know, guiding role. And as I'm interacting and signing up for benefits at the beginning of the year, I could ask questions about what's changed this year? Why has my cost gone up? You know, do you cover LASIK surgery if I'm in the vision section? Rather than reading, you know, a 350 page report, I can bring that into our system um, and ask questions against that. Yeah. But we go further than that. And so what, one of the things that we do is we also look at the data in the system. So we're not just looking at the large language model and maybe you know, policy documents, we're also coupling that with data in the system. So now we can say, let's say um, somebody's going on maternity leave and the policy document says, hey, you can take six months off from maternity leave. That's our standard policy. But in the system, you have six weeks of PTO, mm -hmm. right? So instead of calling HR and say, how long can I really take? the large language model and the data and the policy document can come together and say, hey, you get six months off plus six weeks and this is the total time that you can take. So it's coupling the data with the policy and giving you a very user specific personalized answer to that question. That's great. A um, lot, of, lot of productivity gains there for sure. Huge. I mean, you don't have to have HR and right. Excel, you know, shared service environment answering all these kind of what I would call base level questions, repetitive questions that they get asked all the time. Right. Um, so in case anybody missed Steve's keynote, um, and as a little recap, what is Oracle announcing when it comes to AI agents? First, this is, we started last year, and in fact, what we announced last year, I'll, I'll start there, was basically leverage the large language models to do some basic processing for us. We were doing summarization of data, we were doing kind of text augmentation, we were doing some basic recommendations. This year is re we're really taking it to a whole nother level with AI agents. So we're announcing these AI agents that are basically digital employees and, mm -hmm. and can do work in a particular role. And I can give you, I gave you the benefits example. I, I can give you an order management example. So um, let's say I'm a customer service representative and I'm taking an order and somebody's on the line and, and they have a defect in two of the products that I shipped them. 
and I don't know what our policy is on defects. This is a, a important customer for us. So I can look up, ask questions. I can say, hey, what is the policy for defects? And I can get an answer back that says, hey, you can advance ship them replacement products. You can offer them a discount. And so now I can interact with the system and I understand that they're a really important customer. So they can get a higher discount than maybe a different customer right. can get. So it's this combination of interaction. Um, and so AI agents really enable us to put that type of interaction across our system. So we're announcing 50 AI agents, 50 plus AI agents at, uh, at Cloud World. Wow. Uh, well, so when you talk about the normal automation that's programmed into Fusion, yep applications, and then you bring in these agents, how, how, when you get started with it, you know, how do you decide which ones to turn on? And, and you know, because people aren't going to just be like, sure, let the agents yep. run free at first. Yep. I, I think how, how customers are starting, and, and they've started in, you know, what we've already released. They started slow, they sure. started turning on individual ones, and it'll be the same way, right? So if you have our order management system, you might try in a small group, maybe a business unit, you might turn on a customer service agent um, uh, advisor, and you'll turn that on. Um, the benefits advisor, you might turn that on for a small group, or you might go broader, because it's, it's pretty well, you know, it's, it's pretty well defined, and you can test it and make sure you're getting the, the appropriate answer. So I think customers will kind of ease into it and pick what, what makes the most sense for them based on what application they've deployed, but also how comfortable they feel with the answers. That's one of the things, I mean, big part of what we're really betting on. And, you know, these large language models are really good today, but they're getting really even better every single update, right? You know, ChatGPT takes a leap forward and then it's Claude and then it's, you know, Llama and, and, they, and they, keep, they keep outdoing each other. So we're really good today. The answers are, you know, that we're providing are in the high 90%, mid 90s percent as far as accuracy. And then we give access to the source document so you can always go look at the details. But each release, they get better and better and better. So we're betting on the technology and we just want to make sure that we kind of insulate our customers from that so they can take advantage of what's being delivered. Can I, can we get nerdy just for a minute sure. on agents? Um, because I, you know, this conversation is, is just starting to happen in a big way. Yep. Um, there are different types of agents, right? Yep. You know, conversational, uh, functional agents, supervisory. Can you just give a little, sure. maybe quick tutorial on? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think where we wanted to start was kind of interactive agents, meaning we have 50 plus that you can put on different, in different parts of the application. And we give customers some extensibility capabilities to put them in the benefits area or put them in the order management area or put them in the maintenance area. So we give them some flexibility to do that. Those are more interacting, looking at policy documents. We call it retrieval, augmented generation. That's how we ground it. We have data in our system and they can ask questions against it. Got it. The next set of agents are really kind of what we'll call agentic workflows, but they're really kind of process oriented agents. So in customer service, now we can have agents working completely behind the scenes, working on support cases, identifying patterns in those support wow. cases, pulling up documents or solving those problems one at a time. And maybe they solve 30% today, 40% of you know, service requests tomorrow, maybe it's 80% in the future. So this, that type of automation will get better and better and better. And they'll be working completely autonomous, autonomously in the background solving these problems. Um, so they'll get stronger and stronger. People will get more comfortable with them. So we wanted to start with, you know, hey, let's start and get, get people using them yeah. and, and feel really comfortable with, with, with these kind of, we'll call them rag-based agents. Um, and then we'll move to these agentic workflows, which is coming later this year or early next year. Very cool. Very cool. I mean... It, it is so exciting. Um, for someone who's listening in to this and they're just finding out about AI agents for the first time maybe, or don't really know how Oracle differs from other companies who are doing the same thing. Yep. What's our differentiator in this? I'll say we have, we have a lot, but we have a couple, couple of that come to the top of mind. So, so first is um, we get to leverage OCI. So OCI as a platform is great. Some of the largest large language models are trained on OCI. So we have a great infrastructure. Right. Then we dedicate a large language model specifically for Fusion applications. So we have a dedicated large language model so we can make sure it's secure, it's grounded, we do all the testing, we make sure when we upgrade it, none of the, the models regress. So we, so we have it rolled into our operational process. So those are the first two. But the most important part of it is 
all of the data that we have access to. So we sit on a single unified platform. We have financial data, we have project data, we have human resource data, we have sales, service, marketing, supply chain. All of that makes these more intelligent. So if you're sitting inside our application, we always provide it in context to a business process. We can look at policy documents, but we also can bring in that personalized data element that really gives a much deeper and more accurate response. I'll give you one more example of it. So I gave you a benefits example of, of kind of the combination in maintenance. So we have a maintenance application and um, we get error codes from machines all the time. So we might get an error code that says alarm 727 has been triggered on this machine. We need to send a maintenance tech out to fix it. Well, do you know what alarm 727 is? Maybe you do. <laughs> Fred's definitely, definitely doesn't know. Definitely, he yeah. doesn't know. <laughs> but um, alarm 727, now, they would have to go into their manual, they'd have right. to look it up and, and see. So now they can ask a question, what does alarm 727 mean? Um, and it'll say, hey, this is what the error code means. And it'll look at the data and system, say this is the last time this machine was serviced. This is what we, we would recommend that you do. And it comes back with that recommendation. Then I can update the ticket and send it out to the service technician to go do that. So that combination of kind of information that we can, that we can leverage, the data in our system, and then using it in context to a business process is really our differentiator. I can't wait until there's an HCM agent that is like a Kendall agent for me. <laughs> and it sees my answers to her. Yes. And every time she has a request, it knows, just gives the answer. And then I can... But will it be available on every single platform on which I have to reach out to you? Well, yeah. probably. Oh, yeah. And would it be able to wear those shoes? <laughs> probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. I no. Think so, yeah. That's I the problem. I that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the benefits, though. Lots of efficiency. Productivity. Efficiency, productivity, do more with less, right? So, so really, these agents can kind of do the day-to-day -day repetitive tasks that, you know, you frankly can automate. And, and if they change over time, they can learn and then leave time for strategic, you know, important things to be done by, by people in the organization. So I, I think these agents, these digital employees will work alongside humans in, in, in the workforce. And I think it's progressing, it's progressing really fast. But again, 50 plus agents we're launching, we're gonna start slow, get people to feel comfortable that this is, you know, they're providing accurate, you know, correct answers. And then they'll move into the kind of next phase of AI agents, which, which are these, kind of agentic workflows, which is where we're going. Great, can't wait. Can't wait. Thank you so much, Chris, for shedding light on this awesome topic. And we're super excited to, you know, get this out in our customers' hands and see, uh, see what they can do with it, right? It's great, great to be back. Thank you. Thank you so much.